th th there can be few experiences more haunting for the members opposite than hearing this Prime Minister claim that he's going to sort out a problem. Yeah. First, he said he'd get the NHS waiting list down. Uh, they went up. Unabashed by that, he said he'd get control of immigration. It's gone up. Following that experience, he turned his hand to bringing taxes down. And, would you believe it, the tax burden is now going to be higher than ever. It is ironic that he's suddenly taken such a keen interest in Greek culture when he's clearly become the man with the reverse Midas touch. <laughs> Everything he touches turns to... Uh, maybe the Home Secretary could help me out here. Uh, rubbish. So will the Prime Minister do the country a favour... We need, like, we'll have to check the tape again, uh, Mr Speaker, I think. So will the Prime Minister do the country a favour, warn us what he's planning next, so we can prepare ourselves for the disaster that will inevitably follow. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Speaker, at the beginning of the year, we said, Mr. Speaker, oh. Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, at the beginning of the year, we said we would halve inflation, and this government has delivered, easing the burden on the cost of living for families everywhere. But we know his plans, Mr. Speaker. All the way through that. What did he do? Back inflationary pay rises. He talked about welfare, no controls for welfare, and borrowing £28 billion a year that would just make the situation worse. He mentioned tax, Mr. Speaker. Just this past week, we've delivered the biggest tax cuts since the 1980s for millions of people and businesses, increased pensions and benefits, and this week secured £30 billion of new investment for this country. So he can keep trying. Mr. Speaker, to talk. Oh, oh. Britain isn't listening. Can I just say to the Shadow Foreign Secretary, oh, order, just a little bit quieter, please. I want to hear.